Hello and welcome to my first video lesson on how to use Blender 3D. If you're new to Blender or you've come from 3D Studio Max or Maya, this is the video for you. I'm going to talk today about how to rotate your scene, in other words, how to change the view port of your scene, as well as how to move objects. Um, so let's get started. When you first launch Blender, you'll see a splash screen. You can click away from it uh, and it'll just disappear. When you first launch Blender, you get three objects in your world. Uh, if you're used to Maya or 3 Studio Max, this will be a little bit, little bit weird for you because you're, you'll be used to using or starting with an empty scene. When, when Blender first launches, you get three objects in your scene. You get a cube, you get a camera, and you get a lamp for light in your scene. To select any of these objects, you can right click on it and it'll become or get outlined in an orange yellow color. So I'm right clicking on objects to select them. Um, to view our scene from a different angle, in other words, to change or orbit our view, there's three ways of doing this. To zoom in and out from my scene, I'm going to simply scroll my, my mouse wheel. So I'm going to scroll up to zoom in, and scroll down to zoom out. This could be reversed to what you're used to, uh, but you can always change it in Blender's preferences. To orbit around my scene, which means I want to see the other side of my cube in 3D space, um, I'm going to press my, my middle mouse button down and move my mouse. So I'm pressing my mouse button in, my wheel, downwards, not scrolling yet, and I'm moving my mouse, and that'll orbit around my scene. So I can spin around my scene, decide which angle I want to see my scene from, and let go. If I want to pan my scene, which means to see the left, right, or above or below your scene, you can hold shift down, and then do the same as orbiting. Hold your middle mouse button down, and move your mouse while holding shift. And that'll let you pan side to side or up and down. So again, scrolling your mouse wheel will zoom in and out. To orbit your scene, put your middle mouse button in and move your mouse. And to pan your scene, hold shift down while you orbit. And that will let you pan your scene up and down left and right. Now to view your scene um, using keyboard shortcuts, uh, Blender is very keyboard shortcut oriented. We can use our number pad. Uh, if I go to, if I change the picture of the keyboard, this is your number pad over here. If you have one, that's great. If you don't, this won't work for you. Uh, so we talk about setting up Blender uh, for your own purposes. If you press 1 on your number pad, you see your scene from the front. If you press 3, you see your scene from the right, and 7 for the top. And these, these keyboard shortcuts are really helpful because it's not a very good idea to model and animate your scene from some kind of weird angle. It's better to, to view your scene and add objects and, and change things looking at it from the front, the exact front, the exact side, or the exact top or bottom. Now this brings me to orthographic versus perspective. Uh, when Blender first launches, it, it launches in what's called user perspective mode, which means that when you see your scene, you're actually seeing things as they get closer to you, they appear larger, and as they get farther away from you, they appear smaller. This is how things are seen in real life. On a computer, though, we can have things uh, appear in what's called orthographic view. And this is preferential if you want to see things less distorted on your screen. If I press 5 on my numpad, or I can get there from, by going to view and view perfect ortho, uh, that changes my view from perspective to orthographic. So you'll see now that I'm viewing my scene from the exact front. I press 3 at the exact side or right, and 7 for top. Uh, if I press 5 again, you'll notice the difference. Now my cube gets smaller as it gets farther down. I press 5 again to go back to ortho. It does not do that. I'm going to illustrate this even more by duplicating my cube and moving it farther back. We're in orthographic view mode now, and even though the cube in the, that's selected right now uh, is farther away, it appears the exact same size. If I press 5 and go to perspective mode, it appears more like it's in the real world because it's smaller, because it's farther away. Last thing I'm going to talk about today is using your gizmo. If you use the 3ds Max or Maya, uh, you'll know that the gizmo is these three handles uh, on your object. If you have an object selected, it should, it should show up. The gizmo lets us uh, move, rotate, or scale our object on any of the three axes in our scene. You'll remember from math in grade 5, 6, and 7 that there was a grid 
um, where left and right is represented by the x-axis, and the up and down is represented by the y-axis. Well, and in 3D that's the same, except we have a third dimension, which means we need a third axis, and that is the z or z axis. Now this gizmo has handles, and if I grab one of these handles, I can move my object on any of one of these three axes. So right now I'm dragging my object on only the y axis. I'm going to undo, control z. I can move my object on the x or the z axis. Down here is my gizmo controls. If I click this little gizmo icon here, which looks like our axes, I can get rid of my gizmo altogether. I can always turn it back on. If I select the button next to it, that's rotate. I can rotate my object. And next to it is the scale. And I can scale my object to make it taller or wider or thicker. Now, Blender is very keyboard shortcut oriented. Uh, I'm going to go back to my front view and make it orthographic. Pressing 5. If I want to just move my object from one angle, from the front or the exact side or, or the exact front or top, I can press the G key. And the G key represents or stands for grab. So I press G, I grab my object, and it lets me move my object. From this, though, I can't move my object front or back. And that might be a good thing depending on what you like to do. It'll only move your object with the G key um, perpendicular to your own view. So I can't move it towards me or away from me by using the G key, but I can move it up and down on the z-axis and left and right on the x-axis and left and front view. Um, if I press the R key, I can rotate my object. Again, only um, left and right. I can't rotate it towards me. And if I press S, it'll scale my object um, on all three axes. So it'll scale it proportionally. Alright, that's all I'm going to talk about today. Uh, please watch my next video to learn how to go into edit mode and start editing the vertexes, uh, edges, and faces of objects. Thanks a lot.